Uh, time now for our Woodlawn Hospital report. Brad Rogers joins us, and uh, you brought a guest with you, Brad. Yeah, absolutely. Emily Scouten, our Director of Laboratory Services, is here, so we'll uh, get a chance here in a moment to let you guys uh, hear from her and all the exciting things going awesome. on in our laboratory department. What, how was the board meeting this month? Yeah, I had an excellent board meeting yesterday. Um, you know, went over the numbers for 2022 and, and kind of some plans for 2023. Um, still some really good positive things to note. Our swing bed program um, annually ended the year up, up 115%. Um, so awesome. above budget, which is wonderful. So we're slowly growing that program. And our physician office visits, again, compared to this time last year and then annually, we're above where we were in 2021. So although we're not back to the, you know, the pre-COVID <laughs> numbers, we're slowly getting there. Yes. That's... So excited about that. Um, however, overall, 2022 was a tough year for uh, most hospitals across the country. Yeah. And so we uh, posted a $1 million loss um, on about $160 plus million dollars worth of uh, gross revenue. Okay. Uh, not horrible comparatively, but still not where we want to be right. next year <laughs> or this year, I yeah. should say. So we're doing a lot of stuff to uh, control our expenses and grow volumes coming up this next year. Well, and, and with that, you hope to... Uh, it you hate to use the word get back to a regular routine, but you hope people kind of start getting back to a norm. Yeah, absolutely. We're actually being contacted by insurance companies, um, you know, over the last six months, trying to figure out how we can partner with them because they're wanting their clients <laughs> to get back in for their regular checkups. Right. Uh, everything from well child visits to annual lab draws to um, in October, you know, we run kind of the uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the mammograms. Yeah. Um, the nation as a whole is down on all those wellness screens. Right. So we're going to work really hard this next year with them to increase that. So just kind of a shout out to uh, the community. You know, we're here. We're the only four star facility in 50 plus miles. Um, we want to take care of you right here at home and earn your trust. Yeah. So uh, reach out to us if you need us. So we, we'd love to take care of you. And you keep expanding and growing. And a lot of the things that you used to have to go out of town for, you don't have to now. Absolutely. And, you know, you know, Randy, I don't know if you knew that was coming or not, but that was a beautiful segue. Um, this guy is doing a fabulous job here, folks. Um, talking about some of our growing um, things that have happened in the last year and um, helping the community out. Yeah. You know, we added last year Shannon Guckin. Shannon's a nurse practitioner to our Argus location. We added Dr. Monser Hawk, a new general surgeon, to our general surgery practice. We added Ginger Richard and Kristen Lynch, two new nurse practitioners to our Schaefer Medical Center. Um, and then we also added uh, Francisca Turin Burgos, who's a new nurse practitioner at our Akron location. Okay. So we have added a lot of family practice and then additionally the general surgery um, to here at Woodlawn yeah. in the last year. So a lot of additions. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Speaking of additions, uh, you got a little addition going on at the Schaefer building. How's that going? Um, so when you talk about construction and right on time, <laughs> what do you really mean? Uh, it, when they say done, it's done. That's what That's on time really, is. really, really close. You know, we're <laughs> shooting for an April 1st um, time frame where we can move in any time after that. Okay. So we you have... You know what April uh, 1st is, though. I do. I do. And, and, <laughs> and uh, our practice managers at the locations ask if I was being truthful to them or not. <laughs> and I am being truthful in that I am hoping for that day. <laughs> there you go. Um, we still have some backordered products. Supply chain issues still are still somewhat issue. of a challenge. Yeah. Um, but uh, overall, it's looking fabulous. So we will definitely let you guys know. We're gonna have an open house over there and let the community know to come cool. in and take a look at it. It's, awesome. it's gorgeous. It's gonna be wonderful. Can't wait, can't yeah. wait. Uh, and then just a couple other reminders as far as talking about things we've done over the last several years. Just a reminder about our medical imaging department. I don't know if you, uh, you know, Molly Archie, our director, she's done a fabulous job in the last several years of upgrading and adding to our existing equipment in a way that keeps us at or above the curve. Yeah. We have state-of-the-art CT, state-of-the-art MRI, um, new uh, um, ultrasound machines last year, CT machines were updated in 21. Um, our mammograms were updated in 2019 so that we can do the new uh, 3D mammograms. So everything that we have in that department has been updated in the last three to four years. That's awesome. Um, so we are right there above the uh, curve for all of that. That's so perfect. keep them in mind when yeah. you're looking. Um, and then the only other reminder I have before we get to the good stuff with Emily is um, just a reminder, our cardiology department, St. Vincent Cardiology or Ascension Cardiology is taking over February 1st. 
We will have four days of them here on site. So if you have cardiology needs, please let us know. We've got spaces and we can take care of you right here at home. Awesome. Don't have to travel. Don't have to travel. Especially Absolutely. days like this, you don't want to. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, that would just lead into the other reminder, which is if you do use currently Luther in their last day is tomorrow on the 26th. Okay. Um, let us know if you need us to take care of any transitions of care for you. Perfect. Okay. Now we'll uh, transition right into uh, the blood lady. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the lady that likes to take your blood. That's right. Uh, welcome, Emily. Hey, thank you. Excited to be here today. Well, thanks for joining us on this beautiful day outside, right? Yeah. Where else would you rather be inside, right? Right, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about what's going on in the lab at Woodlawn. Yeah, so I love talking about our lab. We are a CAP accredited lab, which is the College of American Pathologists, which is a gold standard for lab accreditation. So we get the same standards as somewhere like like University of Chicago, and those are applied nationally and globally. Cool. So we are right up to standard with everyone else across the nation. Yeah, I like that. Yes, we do a good job. Uh, you know, and, and again, that goes back to what Brad was saying. You don't have to travel. You can get all the, mm -hmm. the, the lab work done right here. You can, you know, go see your doctor in the Schaefer building, go right over, get the lab work, and mm -hmm. it's all done in one trip. It is, and one of the things I think makes us really special is the staff. Yeah. We've got staff, it's almost, it's actually over 300 years of clinical experience in wow. the laboratory with our staff. We've got some who have a lot of longevity. Two who had 30 year um, anniversaries last year and one with a 35 year anniversary this year. Wow, yes, yeah. that's dedication. Yes, it is. <laughs> and a lot of experience. So yes. uh, those those guys that are gals that are uh, those tough draws, uh, they, they probably can uh, get it uh, on the first first shot. That's always the goal. <laughs> <laughs> what else is happening? And uh, I'm sure you're uh, staying busy as well. We are, we, we do stay busy. We um, spend a lot of time thinking about our patients, right? Patient care is number one for us in the lab. So every day we get together in the morning and the afternoon, we have a communication huddle, we talk about what kind of patient procedures we've got coming up or instrument maintenance or anything that we need to know to help each other out and make sure that we're always taking the best care that we can of those patients. What, what uh, if someone needs labs, uh, what are the hours? I, I know that's a, a big concern for people sometimes too. They, uh, they want to do it before they go to work uh, so they don't have to uh, fast all day long and get starve at lunchtime and try to get into the labs. What, what are the lab hours? Definitely, yeah, we don't want anybody starving. <laughs> So during the week, Monday through Friday, we're open 24 hours a day. Okay. So they can come in when it's the best time for them. Now on the weekends, it's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. And on holidays, we are closed. And okay. that's due to staffing because right. we down staff yeah, on holidays. Right. But uh, yeah, 24 hours a day, you can't, can't beat mm -hmm. that. Obviously, especially if you're a third shifter or something mm -hmm. like that, it works right into your schedule. Absolutely. So yeah, we like to be able to be flexible so that we can take care of, of the people who are coming to yeah. us for care. It, do you need scheduling on that or can you just walk in? Yep, and we are walk-in, okay. so you can come in. So, you know, and, and I have a lot of people ask me, when's the best time to come in? Right? <laughs> Nobody wants to wait. Right, right. <laughs> and I wish I could tell you when that magic time was, but there really isn't. Mm -hmm. So um, there are times during the day that are a little better than others, and usually that's early morning, mm -hmm. but sometimes that's really busy too. Yeah. So Everybody gets in before. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, uh, walk us through uh, uh, the process. Obviously, uh, when they when a doctor orders blood draw and they go over there and you draw the blood, what happens after that? What what where does the blood go? Yeah, it kind of disappears yeah. in the back of the lab. Right, it? right. Yeah. I mean, you, you walk out with a band aid and then you never see it again. <laughs> right. Yes. So it, it comes back to the techs, and the techs are trained to do the lab testing. So we've got different departments. So dependent on what kind of test that is, it goes to the specific department. We have analyzers for most of the things that we do. So we're gonna put it on a machine okay. and run those results. And then the techs look at each and every result that comes off to make sure it looks appropriate and we're not turning out anything kind of crazy. <laughs> but then there's a lot of things that we do that are manual processes. Mm. So that we're actually looking at the blood cells or we're looking for bacteria in that, that sample. So all of those things get taken care of by techs who are trained with either bachelor's or associate's degrees and then those get reported out and sent to the provider that day. Wow. You know, and it's amazing that, you know, you think in uh, technology and the way it is, but there's still some stuff that you're doing manually and in microscopes and everything else. That's right, yeah. There are certain things that humans just have to look at. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to talk about uh, going on in the lab? 
Well, we do have some um, great technology okay. in our lab, um, and it enables us to be able to add new testing as we mm -hmm. go forward. So we've got some things like PCR testing that we heard a lot about with COVID. We were one of the first hospitals in the area to be able to add PCR testing for COVID when everything yeah. hit back, <laughs> yeah, back in 2020. So that gives us the ability to be really flexible and add new testing. Cool, that's awesome. As we go forward. So, and um, we are affiliated with a couple of schools in the area for to have yeah. students for phlebotomy to okay. learn how to draw blood. Wow. And then also with IV Tech and IUSB for training those students. You know, because that's a job, obviously you talked about, uh, you know, experience out there 30, mm -hmm. 35 years. Those those people will uh, eventually be wanting to uh, take it easy and, and enjoy their life. But so you're gonna need some replacements. So obviously, yes, yeah, so you're always uh, wanting people to learn that stuff. Absolutely, and what better way to learn than hands-on yeah. with people who have had a lot of experiences? Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, Brad, got anything else you want to? No, ask I was just going to add to what Emily was saying. You know, she's talking about our partnerships with um, IUSB and Ivy Tech, and I was at the school last week doing a talk with uh, Mrs. Blackburn's uh, mm -hmm. class, and um, you know, U.S. News and World Report still lists medical laboratory technician as one of the top jobs in the country. Mm -hmm. wow. So we kind of talked about. There are a lot of jobs in healthcare that people don't quite know about. <laughs> and sometimes it would fit right into someone's skill set and their, their kind of likes and dislikes yeah. and, and things they just really excel at. And we just don't know about a lot yeah. of those. So that was one of those that I brought up last week is people just don't think about that right away when they're talking healthcare. And it's, it's huge. Yeah. And Most especially of our, if you're a people person. I mean, I mean it, it really, yeah. that's another great attitude to that is if you want to deal with, with people and, and yep. help people. Yes. Absolutely, I mean, there's not a decision that our doctors make that doesn't typically sometimes involve laboratory. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every final decision they make on lots of things involves waiting for that test <laughs> to come back. And so Emily's people do an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously the quicker you can get the test back because of the experience with the, the and, and the back room with the experience that the doctor can, you know, make his next decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's important as well. As, especially uh, t technology and stuff goes forward. So, Absolutely. Anything else, Emily, that you'd like to add? Uh, I, I know there's uh, you know a, a lot behind the scenes that goes on, but anything else you'd like to add? Well, one other special thing about Woodlawn's lab is that we have a microbiology department there at the hospital, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of places don't have. So we can tell those physicians a lot faster what kind of antibiotics somebody might need. Mm -hmm. So it again, it's just, a service that we have right yeah. here in Rochester to get those results for the patients quicker. Perfect, awesome, mm -hmm. love it. Uh, uh, keep up the good work, and uh, you know, uh, congratulate those thirty and thirty-five year people because that that's that's a long time. Yeah, uh, drawing blood. <laughs> Brad, so my my blood was only ten years old back then. <laughs> years and years ago. Uh, years and years awesome. ago. Yeah, if we won't. Be able to go that is that something long, right? that is. Um, consistent I think throughout a lot yeah. of departments in Woodlawn yeah. is boy we have a lot of longevity and I, I see it on the, the board out front like yes. the marquee out front yeah. uh, you always give a monthly yeah. uh, celebration for somebody having an anniversary oh, yeah and, yeah the list just sometimes it goes on and on and it's not one or two years it's 15 20 25 30 you know 45 we had yeah. this year even wow I mean, just Lots yeah. and lots of years, so we're pretty proud of that. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else you want to uh, add, Brad, as we no, wrap just, up today? No, just everybody be safe out there. We don't know what this weather's going to do, and yeah. stay warm, and we'll see you next month. All right. Thank you. With on Hospital Report for the month of January. Back with more here just after this. Giant FM.